everyone! This is my first October video. Really quick, I just wanted to talk about Halloween. So if you didn't know, every October to kind of celebrate, I guess, me starting this channel, I do a thing called Halloween, where the week before Halloween, I do a bunch of videos every day, easy Halloween DIY videos. It started as the weekdays before Halloween, so it's like five videos. So this year it's starting like in the middle of the week, like a Wednesday or something like that. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or maybe Tuesday, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's called Halloween, but really I just do like five days because it's only like the weekdays. I was considering not doing it this year because I was having a really busy few months. In fact, I'm still kind of behind on them. Ideally, I would have had at least a few of them filmed by now. But anyway, I'm still gonna like work my butt off and try to get those out. That's like the one thing that I at least try to do. Another thing that I do in October is a thing called Inktober. If you only stick around here for my DIY videos, then you may not know, or maybe you do and you don't care, but I do art videos as well. So every October I participate in a thing called Inktober and this month I'm also participating in Drawtober. So I'm using the Drawtober prompts and then I'm drawing them in ink, so technically it's still Inktober. Um, but I'm doing a drawing every day. If you want to check them out, then you can see my Instagram. I post them every day after I finish. So the rest of this month's videos will be kind of like compilation speed drawings of the drawings for that week. Next art video, it's going to have two extra ones because I have the first two drawings from Inktober, Drawtober, that I have already done, but obviously I did the painting that I'm doing in this video as my art video this week, so yeah. Anyway, as I mentioned, I've been a little busy, so I'm a little behind on my videos, plus working on Halloween videos. I'm doing like twice as many videos as I normally do. So I'm hoping to get like a bigger Halloween project done to post outside of Halloween because what I aim to do is to have Halloween being like a little bit easier projects and then maybe one that's like right before Halloween, I'll do a bigger costume type video so that you have more time to work on it. <sighs> I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm going to try. So yeah, I guess that's all the updates that I have for you guys for this month. So let's get right into this project. I have a big collection of pins and I can't wear them all at once. I mean, I guess technically I could wear them all at once, but it would look a little ridiculous. But currently, I keep them all in one of my little mugs. Actually, where is it? Currently, I keep them all in this mug, but since I have so many pins, I don't want to wear them all at once, like I said. So I keep them in that, and then they like never get seen again, which kind of sucks. I bought them because I like how they look, right? So I decided to make a display for my pins. I've seen people use canvas where they poke it through and then attach the back. I've seen people use pin board where you poke it in and then put the little backing like in a cup or something. Obviously by the title, you guys should know that I'm doing the pin board version, except I'm adding a little design to it to make it a little bit more interesting looking. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how you can do that as well. So let's get started. You'll need cork board. The one that I got said it was made to fit into a 16 by 20 inch frame, which I'll get into later in the video. Mounting squares. These should come with the cork board if you ended up getting the same kind that I did. A frame that the cork board can fit into. Fabric. Spray adhesive. Pastel or charcoal. And paint. I'm using this cork board that's already mounted on a hard board. If you can't find any like this, you can take a piece of wood that's cut to size and cover it with corkboard tile pieces. These are normally pretty easy to find at the craft store. Cut your fabric a few inches bigger than the corkboard. I'm using a fat quarter, which was the perfect size for the corkboard that I chose. Protect your floor or table or whatever work surface you're using and coat the cork board with a layer of spray adhesive. Lay your fabric over, trying to avoid any wrinkles. Flip the board over, 
spray along the edges and then pull the fabric up and around to the back like so. So now is when I decided to check to see if this cork board actually fit into this frame. And guess what? It didn't. Really, it fit long ways, but it was like a quarter of an inch too wide. So that was a bit annoying. I bought this thinking that it was supposed to fit into a 16 by 20 inch frame. I thought that's what the packaging said. Maybe I read it wrong, but yeah. After looking at what packaging I still had left because I actually like tore it up trying to get it so it wasn't totally readable anymore. I realized that they had the board mounted on a frame that looked a little bit bigger than the cork board itself. And then I realized that it came with four mounting squares to help you mount it. So I figured that I needed to get a frame the next size up, which is kind of annoying because I thought that it was going to fit the 16 by 20 inch frame and not have a border around it, but whatever. For now, I went on to the next step of decorating the cork board. I thought it'd be kind of fun to have an image of a chick with a jean jacket and then have the jean jacket be pinnable. So I sketched a design in Procreate I blew it up in Photoshop, and then I printed it out onto a few pieces of paper. I pieced them together, and then I was ready to transfer the image. You could totally draw your design on a big piece of paper or draw straight onto the board if you're brave enough. My design is pretty complicated, so I went with the digital sketch first. If you need to transfer your design, take the paper and cover the back with pastel or charcoal depending on the color of your fabric. I chose a light yellow because I thought that it showed up best on the distressed blue fabric that I chose. Position the design over the board and trace over with a pencil or pen or whatever. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it has a point that can press into the paper so the lines will get transferred. On camera, you can just barely see the yellow lines, so I ended up going back over them with a dark blue marker. This is an optional step, but if you're worried about the pastel or charcoal lines rubbing off, that you'll get a little confused with the lines that are there, and you just want to make them more bold, then you can do this as well. And then paint your design. Obviously, the design that I chose is a little bit more complicated than it needed to be, I like painting, so I took this opportunity to really go all out. You could totally do something way more simple. You could do a similar person with a jean jacket, but simplify the face, maybe. Or you could do a simple shape, or anything in between. Actually, I would love to see what kind of designs you guys come up with. The only thing is that you would need a portion of the fabric to not be covered with paint because you're going to be poking pins in and out of it and if you do that on a painted area you'll see all the holes. That's why I didn't fill in the jacket with paint. I did use marker but that kind of absorbs into the fabric. It doesn't like sit on top of the fabric like paint does. So I'm not too worried about that getting kind of messed up looking when you put pins in and out of it. If you want to see this whole speed painting of this video you can go check out my art video for this week. Anyway, once your design is finished and dry, then it's time to assemble. As you can see, I got a bigger frame. You can discard the clear plastic, or it might even be glass, or you can use it for a future project, but you don't need it for this one. Take the backing and mark the midpoints. Mark the midpoints of the painting, on the edges, and then match those marks up to determine how to position the painting. Mark around the painting, just to make it a little bit easier whenever you go back to reposition it, and then place the mounting squares at the corners of the cork board. And place it back down onto the backing. I wanted the backing to match the background of the painting, so at this point I went and colored it with the gray background color that I used. 
and then I let it dry. Put the backing and cork board into the frame. And then it's done. Hang it up, and then all that's left is to fill it up with your pins. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. I post art videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, and Twitch, and I'll leave the information to all of those down below. Thank you to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you are interested in becoming a patron or learning about what Patreon is, I'll leave a link to mine right up here and you can go check it out. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next week.